South Florida. This is Headliners, only on CBS News Miami. Hello and welcome to Headliners. I'm Lauren Pastrana. A warning from one economist saying America is heading into what he calls an economic hurricane. Gas and food prices keep climbing, and for some in South Florida, just feeding your family is becoming a real struggle. CBS News Miami's Joel Waldman shares one family's story. That's kind of what we're going through because hurricanes tear everything apart and everything is being torn apart. Everything's chaos. Getting uh, some canned goods and getting water and just putting it to, uh, to the side, kind of like uh, preparing for a hurricane. It's already a rough ride for little Kaylee Wilbanks Gonzalez and her parents, Teresa and Sean. The economy lurching like this swing keeping Kaylee's parents on an emotional roller coaster. I mean, I want to be able to provide for her, but I can't afford the things that she needs. It's really stressful. Uh, after working my main job, I got to work a second job. Despite their best efforts, Dad Sean working two jobs and Mom Teresa homeschooling daughter Kaylee, they still can't seem to make ends meet. just back from Walmart, where they hit a wall of reality. We barely got anything, and we paid 104. And, I mean, we really didn't get any food. It was toiletries and things that we needed. It just didn't seem like we got our money's worth. The Wilbanks Gonzalez family spun around like palm trees in a hurricane, caught in a torrent of blistering inflation and historic lows in consumer sentiment. They're hoping to see the storm clouds lift on the other side, just like FIU's associate professor of finance, Mark Del Pezzo. But we're trying to keep it from being a deep recession. We'd like to have a mild recession, have inflation come back under control, keep unemployment you know, below 10% for sure. The Wilbanks Gonzalez is hoping they can soon move out of Teresa's parents' home, forced to move in five years ago because of skyrocketing rent. But right now, they're just hoping to get through this financial firestorm that they and so many others find themselves in. I don't see where we're going to get out of this, honestly. We're in a hole and we can't get out. Joel Waldman, CBS News, Miami. And our four-legged friends also feeling the effects of inflation. Some pet owners reportedly have been forced to surrender their pets to shelters because they can't even afford their food anymore. But one food bank is now offering some help. CBS News Miami's Carly Barnett has that story. Good girl. Many households are feeling the pinch of rising inflation prices, and that can affect our beloved furry friends. Me is actually an emotional support animal. Catherine Potter is a school nurse and says the free pet food distributions from the nonprofit Farm Share were a lifesaver for her and her pup Mia during a tough economic time. I had two jobs. I lost one of my jobs, so the rising cost of everything, and then without that extra income, it came in very in handy to get some food for her because it's not only about us humans. Gil Zapata works with Farm Share and says they saw the need. We began to get reports of these folks had to at times um, return their pets to the shelters or they were not able to feed their pets in the same way they were in the past and so the pets were suffering because of it. So now they're expanding that help. The ASPCA for the first time is providing a grant to Farm Share in the form of $150,000 so they can provide more dog and cat food distributions to the rest of the Miami-Dade area they serve. We have been able to help Farm Share provide almost 200,000 pounds of pet food to families. News pet parents like Catherine are glad to hear. Knowing that she's taken care of along with us, like that's, and we have a roof over our head, like that's all we can ask for. Carly Barnett, CBS News, Miami. The Broward County Commission's recent decision to devote millions of dollars for more 911 personnel is good news for the Broward Sheriff's Office. 911 operators work closely with the Sheriff's Real-Time Crime Center, which uses thousands of cameras for high-tech crime prevention. CBS News Miami's Keith Jones shows us how the technology works and how residents can have their own systems become part of the program.
So right here, we've got a 40-foot video wall. The impressive display of electronics in the BSO Real-Time Crime Center is connected to more than 19,000 cameras throughout Broward County. The crime prevention technology spawned from tragedy in the MSD Commission. Built this facility out so that we can have better access to camera systems within our schools, and it really has grown beyond that. And so has the facility. Once just 400 square feet of space blossomed into this. We stole this concept. Uh, this is not new in the sense of what Real-Time Crime Centers are supposed to do. Uh, we learned one of our uh, leads here is Captain Riggio came out of New York City post 9-11 where he had a lot of experience with building out their system that they have. So when he came into the organization, it just made sense that, okay, we have some hard lessons learned. We lost 17 people on our watch. And now every school in Broward is outfitted with cameras in classrooms, halls, outside of buildings. Lieutenant Dave Fernandez gives us a tour. See the calls coming in at, you know, shots fired at a baseball field. The guys can click on the map, they click on the closest camera, and then the 16 nearest cameras to that will open up at the same time. So then that way they can work the scene and provide intelligence to the responding units. The Real-Time Crime Center now has access to cameras at houses of worship, businesses, and gas stations. And beginning this month, homeowners can become a part of the system. The cameras used would only be pointed in public areas, nothing private. You see like all the dots that, are, that have the camera icon in it. Right. That right there displays where each individual camera's at. Lieutenant Fernandez right, guarantees in the last two years, this system helped avoid some sort of mass incident. Stopping just one crime, the system is deemed a success, but its reach goes far beyond that. We've investigated over 1,600 uh, 1600 individuals that may have exhibited sometimes uh, or signs of threats or concerns for the community. 200 plus of those have resulted in arrest. Keith Jones, CBS News, Miami. Now to our eye on health, a cancer breakthrough that in the words of one local expert is leaving doctors astonished and hopeful. Every single patient in a clinical trial was cured, and now local patients may get to try that treatment too. CBS News Miami's Bobeth Yates has that story. I'm a miracle, like right here, standing without any surgery, don't have cancer. This is a real life testimonial from one of the 18 cancer patients participating in a groundbreaking clinical trial conducted at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, a hospital Baptist Health is affiliated with. I've never seen a trial where 100% of the participants had a positive response. So that's what's so amazing about this. Dr. Michael Zenner, the CEO of Baptist Health Miami Cancer again. Institute, says during the trial, rectal cancer patients were given an experimental cancer drug called Desarlomab, which allowed their own immune system to target and destroy the cancer cells. To almost everyone's amazement, all of the patients in the trial responded to the immunotherapy. That's what's so amazing because they all expected to fail in some way and then go on to the traditional therapy. But the medication didn't fail, and instead of using chemo, radiation, or even surgery, their cancer went into remission. The world just stopped for a second, and I couldn't believe it. You could ask her, like, I barely reacted, because it was like, I was not expecting to hear that news. And in this promotional video released by the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, four of the trial participants spoke out about their results. I didn't see the tumor, so I was thinking, where is the tumor? And then maybe I thought it's hiding somewhere inside. Doctor told me like there is no more tumor. The first thing I did, I uh, called my mom. Yeah, we both cried. Um, uh, it was life changing. Results, Dr. Zenner says, is a game changer in cancer treatment. I think this is the next generation of how we're going to treat cancer. Bo Beth Yates, CBS News, Miami. One South Florida business is stepping up to support families in Ukraine. CBS News Miami's Trish Christakis joins us from South Beach with more on the fundraiser. Mango's Tropical Cafe raised $60,000 between food and beverage sales and auction items. And the founder, David Wallach, is donating another $40,000 to that. I've guaranteed $100,000 for us to raise today. And we're going to continue on to raise a million dollars uh, for Global Empowerment Mission. There was a magic show, dances, and live entertainment to draw a crowd, all for a good cause. The cafe partnered with Global Empowerment Mission, a 501c3 nonprofit helping those facing disasters. All of a sudden, we are going to make an impact and help save lives. Michael Capone, GEMS founder, says they've been based in Ukraine, Poland, and Hungary since day two of the war, providing relief to those in need. So events like this help fund those efforts. We've relocated about 32,000 people so far and over $100 million in supplies. 
Wallach went with Capone overseas to help and says he couldn't just stand by after all he saw. When I went to Warsaw, I saw the magnitude of the work they're doing there, and I could not just sit and not do something. Which is why events like this, he says, are so important. He had local artists from Miami and artwork from Ukraine up for auction, as well as his own motorcycle in an effort to raise as much money as they can. We're bringing in uh, about four 18-wheeler trucks per day into Ukraine, right? So money that's raised at this point is really going towards logistics and then relocating people. Trish Kristaki, CBS News, Miami. When Headliners returns, we're putting the spotlight on some brave first responders who provided a different kind of help to families of the Surfside victims. Their story straight ahead. From South Florida, this is Headliners, only on CBS News, Miami. Welcome back, I'm Lauren Pastrana. Turning now to the Surfside tragedy one year later. We're shining the spotlight on the first responders who were there after the Champlain Tower South collapsed. Two rabbis, both police chaplains, arrived on site almost immediately. They worked closely with the families and the first responders for more than a month. And now they're sharing their story with us. This is how the morning looked like. People showing up and we're standing with the yellow pad, taking names, duplicate names, people with nicknames and everybody. It was chaos. Rabbi Mark Rosenberg lives minutes away from the Champlain Towers. He arrived at the site less than an hour after the collapse. He called the Surfside Mayor's Office and other chaplains. A seasoned police chaplain with the Miami-Dade and New York Police Departments, he said it was surreal and yet somewhat familiar. The silence, the smell, it was like deja vu 9-11 all over again. We helped the people that survived, the people that, that were on the streets. Some of them ran out and they left everything behind. As the sun rose, it brought the reality of just how devastating this was. I've been involved in a lot of different trauma things, plane crashes, different things. This was different. This was people having a hopeless look in their eyes. At the same time, they were looking for any type of confidence, for anything. Fellow chaplain Rabbi Yossi Harlig heads the Chabad of Kendall and Pinecrest. This is the first time he's encountered anything at all of this magnitude. Just, you know, hugging them and just holding their hands, realizing that they are, you know, beyond shocked and panicked, knowing their loved one is trapped. At that moment, they thought they were just trapped in the building, not realizing what the inevitable is going to turn out. So those were the first, you know, hour for me being on the site. On site for both victims and first responders, liaisons between detectives and desperate families as the days went on. We were there for the families and 10 minutes later we would, you know, speak to the homicide or fire rescue who would just break down, who just simply couldn't handle what they're doing. When asked what they said to the families, the answer comes from having been trained to deal with trauma. Our job is not here to defend God. Our job is not here to defend anyone, our job is there to be there with the people and hold their hand and look at them in the eyes and say, we're here with you. They were with them until they could give each family much needed closure. The pain from other people gave us the strength. We were not able to stop. We have a mother tell you at the beginning that I have my 21-year-old daughter who came in from out of the country just for one day. The same mother 30 days later when I did a notification she looks at me and she says, thank you for bringing me the best news a mother could ever receive. That's what gave us strength, that the worst news becomes the best news. The rabbi's role was crucial for a largely Jewish population. The families are depending on us. Number one, we have to deal with, uh, deal, uh, to educate the first responders how you deal with a body, of Jewish body, uh, bodies when they pull out of the site. So they were turning to us because they wanted the families to get the comfort to know they're doing everything according to our tradition. But even with tragedy all around, not every memory is a painful one. When the president walked in, the first lady, the governor was there and the first lady, the mayor was there, the senators were there. It was a room of three, 400 people and everyone was walking around. You didn't see then Republican, Democrat, president, governor, it was all one family, all wanting the same thing, all caring about the same thing, all feeling the pain in the room. Being sensitive, not emotional, is what got them through. Professionals call it being on red alert. Such a heightened moment that you shut your emotion down and you just work, work, work. We just keep going and we keep doing what we gotta do. The strength comes from God from up above. 
Lauren Pastrana, CBS News, Miami. When Headliners returns, we'll look at how Miami-Dade officials are working to keep mosquitoes under control. From South Florida, this is Headliners, only on CBS News, Miami. Welcome back, I'm Lauren Pastrana. Summer in South Florida means heat, scattered storms, and of course, mosquitoes. Miami-Dade Mosquito Control now has crews working around the clock, treating certain parts of the county. CBS News Miami's Ashley Dyer went along to see how they do it. When I see the June is coming in calendar, I'm like, <laughs> let's, let's hope we get lucky this year or June is gonna be insane. As stagnant rainwater lingers in parts of South Florida, calls are coming in and crews are heading out. They're flying and biting and laying another set of <laughs> eggs. But the numbers are quickly climbing. In the first six days of June, Mosquito Control Operations Manager Ishik Umlu says they received nearly 400 service requests. Cutler Bay definitely needs a special attention. We need to keep our eye on that area. It's an area that can easily become infested with mosquitoes. So when they emerge as adults, they're in like black clouds. Most of the time, crews spray for mosquitoes overnight. The goal is to kill the bugs when they're in the larva stage before they hatch. We do surveillance um, nonstop. Mosquito control crews have 300 traps set up throughout the county to keep track of how many mosquitoes are in each area. They like to um, lay their eggs in containers such as buckets, bird bats, toys. The best way for you to prevent your neighborhood from becoming a breeding ground is to get rid of any standing water in your yard. Any container, you can name it, you can find them. They would contain hundreds and hundreds of them. If you're noticing more mosquitoes in your neighborhood, head to our website. We have a link where you can submit a request or call 311. Ashley Dyer, CBS News, Miami. Thanks for joining us for this half hour on Headliners. As always, keep it right here to CBS News Miami for up to the minute breaking news and weather 24 hours a day. Have a great day.